Beef Cheeks. Let's get to them. All right, in case you're curious, I do have a ton of charcoal left over from my last cook. Um, I'll put that video up in the corner. Uh, I have heard a few guys say, don't reuse your charcoal in your IVS, but I'm one of those foolish guys that's like, yeah, that seems really wasteful to me to throw all that charcoal out. And until I get burned on it once, I'm kind of a bonehead. I'm gonna try that. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Let's say we get into the cook and uh, I have to throw a few more briquettes in there. It's no big deal. So all I'm gonna do is light a half a charcoal chimney um, of Kingsford Blue and dump that right over here on the already burned side. I even have a few little burned out pieces of hickory there, but I'll obviously add a couple more and we'll get going. One of the top 100 lessons of beginner barbecue tips. Don't dump hot coals while you're wearing your Crocs. I almost forgot to open my vents, y'all. Now that would have been a surprise in 30 minutes when I came out to check temps. All right, everybody, let's get to it. We got a brand new bottle of Killer Hogs barbecue rub and we got our beef cheeks right here. So uh, let's get into this and get rubbing. Got my favorite barbecue knife. All right, and I'm discovering beef cheeks with you for the first time. So I've watched a couple of videos, but uh, again, I'm not too uptight about this at all. It just looks like um, I'm gonna treat them just like we would beef ribs. I am gonna separate these connected pieces that are different sizes though. And I'm actually gonna run in and get a fillet knife so I can do just a tiny bit of trim work. All right, I'm gonna try and do as minimal a trimming as possible because these are very, very uneven and I don't wanna do damage to them. So let's just get in here and sort of see what we got. But I'm gonna tell you right now on my first run through with beef cheeks, these things are tough as nails. And it's no wonder that you wanna um, that you want to smoke them for a real long time or, uh, or braise them in the oven for a very long time because these puppies are shoe leather, wow. But on YouTube, there's plenty of people that turn them into something delicious. I think I'm just gonna get rid of this entire flap. There's meat there, but it's so thin and it's so uneven. That does not look delicious. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. Let's rub this guy up. Again, my barbecue rub philosophy with a normal big hunk of meat like this or bigger. Uh, with a normal amount of moisture on the surface, put as much rub on this baby as will stick. No more, no less. If you use a binder, it throws off that formula, so I don't use a binder. As much rub as will naturally stick to this piece of meat with just the natural moisture content level of this meat, that's how much rub I'm gonna put on it. Shake off the excess. And after this sits here for five or 10 minutes and weeps a little bit more, it's possible just a touch more rub will stick to it and maybe I'll dust it up again after that process. But uh, for now, you know what? As much, as much rub will stick, that's my philosophy and I'm sticking to it. All right, so I'm excited to do this cook because I want to experience all the, uh, the buzz around beef cheeks, but I will tell you this, my first impression of beef cheeks is that these are the most wasteful cuts of meat I've ever purchased. Um, at least half of this is inedible. And so whenever you're pricing these at the grocery store, I don't discourage you from trying them. They're a fun little new barbecue thing to try out but when you're trying them, double the price per pound that you're paying and then ask yourself if you wanna do beef cheeks or not. 
because you're gonna throw about half of it away if, if these beef cheeks that I have here from Sam's Club, um, which I bought fresh, not frozen, big pack like you saw, if these are any indication of what an average set of beef cheeks is like, which I have to imagine they are, again, um, I would estimate about 50% loss, and that's before you start cooking. So you're gonna end up with 33 to 40% total cooked weight from what you started with at the end of the day. And that's a little spendy. These, these weren't super cheap, they weren't super expensive, but uh, they weren't the cheapest thing I've ever bought for barbecue either. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna do some beef cheeks. These ones look awesome. Let's get going. All right, smoker's been holding steady just under 300. Um, I was inside eating lunch and spending time with the family, so this baby's probably been running for an hour and a half. We're gonna just throw a handful of some of these little, little chunks of wood that I'm using up from my uh, wood chunks bag. And uh, most of that is hickory. One piece of that, uh, I don't remember if it's this one or this one, but one of these pieces is cherry. Everything else is hickory, which is my favorite mix to go with. Let's throw these babies in. All right, here's what we ended up with. Part of one rack in the LSD. I'm gonna keep these giblets towards the front because I'm gonna have to uh, get those in the braising liquid much sooner than the larger chunks in the back. And that lets you in on how we're gonna finish these. Once these are up to color, um, nice and barked up. I am gonna throw them in a beef broth uh, slash barbecue sauce, real thin braising liquid to get them up to 205, 210 and really break these puppies down. I'll show you that here in a few minutes. So here's my theory behind beef cheeks. Um, I never cooked them before, but when I'm in that situation where I've never cooked a piece of barbecue meat before, I've cooked enough barbecue, enough different pieces of meat on enough different kinds of cookers where there's really only one question I want answered when I go on Google and start researching this. I don't want to spend half an hour uh, with 15 different recipes. Who does beef cheeks this way? Who does this? I don't want to know any of that. I want to know one thing. Do I treat these more like a piece of ribeye or do I treat these more like a piece of brisket? Is this a high quality premium piece of meat that's going to go hot and fast on the grill? Or is this a uh, can be delicious down the road piece of meat but one that's gonna take a little more art uh, to get there, like a brisket, like beef ribs, like those kind of things. And as you can see here, um, as I was just quickly Googling what, you know, how to handle beef cheeks, um, all of these recipes that were popping up were talking about low and slow. It was braising, it was uh, low smoking, slow cooking, and that tells me right away how I'm gonna treat them. So I don't then need to go watch 100 different videos and read a bunch of different recipes and spend an entire day figuring out how to do this neat new cut of meat. I know what category it's in now. I know exactly how I wanna treat it, just like a, a little brisket. And uh, so, hey, at that point, you just get to it. All right, boys and squids, we're gonna make up a quick braising liquid. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different things I'm going to put in mine. That's because I'm weird and I like doing things uh, a little crazy. Uh, basically a refrigerator mix. And uh, I just feel like being a little more complex today. You don't have to do this. You could put two or three things in your braising liquid. But I would recommend starting with some beef stock. Um, I'm making up mine a little bit ahead of time. Since these ingredients are coming out of the fridge... What I'm gonna do is make this braising liquid up and then I'm gonna cover it in tin foil and throw it in the smoker and let it heat up until it's time to put the meat in here because um, if you put, uh, if you use a cold braising liquid, what I've found with um, uh, wrapping pork butts is when I put those pork butts into a foil pan with cold liquid, it slows my cook down by about a solid hour. Um, those pork butts don't move in temperature for an hour after I put them in the cold braising liquid. And I don't really wanna slow things down today, so that was about half a box of some leftover beef broth that we had. Number two, I'm gonna put a dash, just a dash of really strong, good quality coffee. Um, coffee rubs are really good on beef, so I'm gonna try some coffee in our braising liquid and see how that goes. Then some Killer Hogs vinegar sauce, just a dash of that. 
Um, I don't want this braising liquid to completely cover the meat. I just want it to come up on the sides. So uh, we're not going to make it too deep. Some good old Lee and Perrins. I recommend the name brand Worcestershire. Really nice, strong, delicious, salty anchovy flavor. Um, oh, we actually only have seven ingredients. I accidentally pulled out the Tabasco sauce and the Crystal Louisiana hot sauce, and I really only wanted the Crystal. And I don't want to put much of that in there. I'm not trying to make these hot ribs, but I just want a, a little, little bit of kick. And then this, uh, you can see... It says Yo on it. This is Mr. Yoshida's original gourmet sauce that you can buy at Sam's Club. It's uh, it's like a really thick teriyaki sauce on steroids. It's really amazing. It's the best Asian sauce I've ever had. If you have a Sam's Club membership, find yourself some Mr. Yoshida's original gourmet sauce and you'll end up using it on everything. This is HP sauce. It's famous in Britain. Um, I believe my British buddy told me that they use it on some kind of beef sandwiches that they have over there. I can't remember if it was beef back ribs that they use. Um, but uh, anyways, I've never had the British sandwich. I just wanna put a few dashes of this in here. It's a really amazing, it's a flavor I can't describe. Um, never had anything quite like it before. It's kind of vinegary. Um, it, I wouldn't say it's sweet, very sweet at all, but it's a tomato vinegar, malt vinegar kind of thing which sounds like barbecue sauce at first, but it's really not much at all like barbecue sauce. I'm not sure if the unique flavors are coming from the spirit vinegar um, or from the dates or from the rye flour, tamarind. I'm not sure. Those are all flavors that I'm not really used to using in cooking, but this has a really unique flavor. Um, that's It's, it's really good. Uh, Although, <laughs> being really unique, usually you're either going to love it or hate it. Uh, there's not much middle ground on things like that sometimes. So, just want to blend that up a little bit. Again, as you can maybe see, you know, this is a normal fork here. Man, I'm off camera, sorry. Uh, normal fork here, it's only coming up on the fork just a little ways. You know, that's maybe a half inch deep, three quarters of an inch deep. Then once we plop the meat down in here, it'll get a little bit deeper, but uh, that's our braising liquid. I'm gonna go heat that up. Um, we're about an hour into the cook. I expect in the next 30 to 45 minutes, I'll be putting some of those smaller pieces into the braising liquid, and then maybe an hour and a half from now, putting those larger pieces in too, but we'll see. All right, we got our braising liquid in there. Check out these. You know, this is the one hour mark. We're getting really nice color on these babies. Really nice color, really barking up well. Uh, I think another 30 minutes and these little guys here can go in the braising liquid. And maybe an hour, we'll throw these big suckers in. Looking good. All right, y'all. We uh, put our smaller chunks into our braising liquid, which was already steaming. That liquid was nice and hot. Love to see that because now our meat will not slow down at all. Uh, every once in a while you're gonna do something stupid though in barbecue and I just realized a really dumb mistake that I made I forgot to throw those hickory and cherry chunks in when we started our cook so um, those little chunks that we just threw in there uh, won't get any of that good hickory flavor on them unfortunately cooking with charcoal obviously you're still gonna create some smoke and it's still gonna be tasty enough but uh, a little disappointing because I would really like to see some hickory on there but uh, I put on Every one of those chunks now, um, it'll start creating a lot of good smoke. Still isn't gonna make a huge impact probably on the bigger chunks because they've already reached uh, hot enough internal temperature where they're not gonna take on much smoke, unfortunately. But I'm hoping to at least give them a little kiss of hickory smoke uh, in their last 30 or 45 minutes sitting out in the smoke before I put them in the braising liquid as well. Anyhow, we'll roll with it. The meat looked awesome. Uh, it felt like it's just starting to get tenderized. Um, I didn't probe it yet, so I don't know how tender it was internal, but they, they were squeezing nice, uh, like they're starting to just break down a little bit and render and get nice and tender. So uh, that braising liquid will definitely finish that process. And again, in a few more minutes here, we'll put in the big chunks and uh, probably let them sit in that braising liquid for at least an hour, hour and a half. And as we started this cook in the early afternoon, hopefully these bad boys will be ready by supper time if we decide to have them for supper tonight. So there's your hour and a half, two hour update, somewhere in there. 
All right, y'all, we're out here for the almost three hour check. Um, I think those small ones have been in the brazing liquid for like, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour, hour 15. I'm not really keeping track today. That's the nice thing about barbecue. Relax, laid back, it's still gonna turn out fine. But I'm gonna tell you right now, when we came out that door a minute ago to come do our check, uh, it is smelling amazing with that hickory smoke rolling. So let's take a look. We're gonna probe our bigger chunks for tenderness and then we're gonna throw them in that braising liquid. Let's see what's going on in that smoker. Oh, Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> okay, I just realized one of our beef cheeks is somehow on the other rack down here where I did not put it. So, apparently when I came out here and pulled on this the last time, he rolled off the back of this rack and ended up on the bottom rack. No big deal. And now he's uh, rolling like a baseball. Hopefully we don't lose him. Anyhow, I'm gonna throw those in our braising liquid. They are looking delicious. And uh, we're gonna let them roll for at least an hour. But hold on a second here. Let me get my hot glove on. And when I pull this guy out to uh, throw him in the braising liquid, I will also show you the tenderness probing. Baby, oh baby, I wish you could smell this. Oh, you gotta be careful when you're working with braising liquid because that came out steaming hot and that'll give you a facial. By the way, I love this awesome stainless steel table right here on my LSG. It is amazing to have that in the winter time. Yeah, I got my firebox open in January in Minnesota. I mean, my cook chamber. It's all right, it's gonna work out. Yeah, my neighbor just rolled in with a loud Honda. It's all right, it's gonna work out. Anyhow, so uh, 181, that's really irrelevant to me at this point, but I just turned the thermometer on to show you because I knew some people would be curious. I couldn't care less about temperature at this point. All I'm caring about is tenderness. And let me tell you, other than this huge guy, all of these are probing like jello. Notice I didn't say butter, trying to use a new phrase. Everybody in the barbecue world says probing like butter. Tired of hearing it. Want to think up something new. Probing like jello, even though I hate jello. This one is a little bit tough in the middle, but these guys are all tender, tender, tender. No matter. Temperature is irrelevant. I don't care. I'm throwing these in for another 45 minutes to an hour in the braising liquid because I want these things absolutely falling apart amazing. And that's how they're going to end up. We'll check back with you in an hour, y'all. Uh, just real quick here, I will tell you, I usually run with it about like this, quarter to a third open. I am opening her up uh, pretty much all the way now. Actually, I'm not going to go quite that wide. About right there, about double what I normally do. And I'm gonna crank this baby open as well to about half. Not only because I left my door open and I wanna get temps up fast, but also because I wanna get this braising liquid up real nice and hot uh, for the last hour, 45 minutes. Let me say that again. For the last hour or 45 minutes in here, um, I, wanna, I wanna be up around 300. So we'll get it rocking hot and break these bad boys down nice and tender. Gonna be awesome. It's time y'all, here we go. All right, everybody. It is taste test time. I cannot even wait to get into these beauties. One thing I'm going to be very interested in is how much smoke did these bad boys take on? Check this out. Mmm, -mm. looking steamy and delicious and dark and bark. Yeah, I just totally barked on camera. That was uh, that was not in the script. Anyhow, first of all, I wanna try one of these little tiny guys. Oh my. I just pulled out a knife. <laughs> it don't look like there's gonna be a knife needed. Now I am curious on what these finished at internal. It's kinda hard to take a temp on a little tiny piece of meat like this, but we're gonna give it what we got. Wow, I expected much higher than a minute ago. It said 191, 190, 194, 196. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. 199, 200, yeah. 
that's what I would have expected in the 200 range for based on how absolutely tender. Oh my, that is amazing. Wow, folks. Um, wow, beef cheeks. How have I never tried this before? Maybe this is worth losing 50% uh, right off the top. Now I want to cut into this biggest one. This one I don't expect to be quite at 200, but we'll find out. Wow, 201, 202. Okay, 199, 200, still nonetheless. I can't believe those finished at about the same temperature. That's, that's amazing, y'all. Now let's cut into one of these and taste it. All right, I could squeeze this one. It's not quite as tender. I could squeeze that one in half, but I actually want to make some nice looking slices. Anyhow, gotta make a gotta make a nice thumbnail for my YouTube video. So let's make some nice slices out of this baby so we can take some pics and do some taste testing, y'all. Wow. All right, so of course there's not gonna be any sort of major smoke ring because as you remember, I forgot to put in my smoke. Um, my hickory wood chunks, but nonetheless, nonetheless, we survived. And we got ourselves a little bit of smoke essence, it smells like, but I'm, I'm real curious to see if we got any smoke essence it tastes like. I cannot even wait to try this. Honestly, these babies are so tender and juicy that uh, it's gonna be hard to pick up the ones that I just shredded and even get them into my mouth. Man. I know the lighting is terrible. I lost my natural daylight, relying on a garage incandescent bulb. Thank you, Thomas Edison. Oh my. Wow. There is a reason that the Hispanic world is using these on barbacoa, street tacos this is amazing that is rich and fatty that is every bit as good as brisket point um wow again there's not a ton of hickory on it unfortunately because i waited so late to put those chunks in because i forgot I take back everything I said about the cost of beef cheeks and the waste. <laughs> yep, you're going to lose 50% of your beef cheeks, but guess what? That is flavor town. I hate to steal a term from, from old guy, but wow, that is delicious. This one is nice and barky. So, so, so good. This is from that bigger piece. Awesome barbecue flavor because of the rub, because of the charcoal. That braising liquid, I can taste those flavors coming through as well. Um, that's not true when I do my, my liquid on pork butts because I don't use as powerful of liquid flavors in that pork butt uh, braising sauce. But this nice, dark, rich, beefy, beefy braising sauce, with starting with that beef broth, beef stock, so good. This is so rich. These slices, even on that huge hunk that didn't get as much time in the braising liquid, that biggest piece that should be the toughest, not a hint of resistance. Uh, this is a thousand times better than the prime rib I did in my last video. This is a great piece of beef. Where have you been all my life? Beef cheeks. That is awesome. Try it.
That is the richest barbecue beef candy that you have ever had in your life. It is like every bite, every bite is from the fattiest, riches, richest part of the point on the best prime brisket you've ever smoked in your life. That is good, good eating. Um, wow. I hope that if you never tried beef cheeks before that you'll give them a try after watching this video. That is genuinely amazing. Here's one of the tiny ones. This is not a piece I cut off. This is a tiny little guy smoked by himself and then put in that braising liquid. That's amazing. Beef cheeks all day long, hands down. That's one of the top three barbecue pieces of meat I've ever put in my mouth before. That is every bit as good as beef ribs, folks. Beef plate ribs coming right from the butcher. Beef cheeks are all of that and more. And I cannot wait to try these uh, for round two sometime on some street tacos because now I see why they do it. That, that, uh, this rub, I only did one layer. I never dusted it back up again because I didn't want to overpower this meat. And uh, I just wasn't sure what beef cheeks were gonna be like. But man, one layer of that rub, then later going into the braising liquid, the only thing that would have made this a little bit better is just a touch more hickory on it. And I'm kicking myself for forgetting that. But I will rectify it next time, I tell you that. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you already know the joy of beef cheeks, comment down below and tell me welcome to the club. And if you've always wondered, should I pay the price for beef cheeks? They're like four, five, six dollars a pound. They're not super cheap. Is it worth it? Folks, try it once. You gotta decide for yourself. And uh, if they come out like this batch did, I already know what you're gonna decide. Absolutely amazing. Go get yourself some beef cheeks. Wow.